Hey guys, this is Kill, that guy Kill, with another Origin video. Well, in fact, this will be my first Origin lore video. Now, keep in mind, everything I'm about to say in this series, and everything I'm going to say in this future series, unless it's announced officially, I'm just doing this at my own fruition. Alright guys, since Morigesh is fresh in our minds since she just came out, um, I wanted to bring light to a little bit of her origin. So we're gonna today we're gonna talk a little bit about Morgesh. Now, from the races that we've talked about and the lore that we're gonna jump into in this, we're gonna be referencing just a small bit, right? We're not gonna go too heavy. This is not a deep dive lore. This is just her origin and who defines who she really is, right? So Morgesh is a forgotten one of these. She's actually not just any forgotten. She is the chieftain's daughter. She's a bit of a handful, I guess you could say. She does not, she is not shy about talking about her opinions and pushing her agenda onto her father enough to where it persuades even his mind. Now the forgotten are, just to recap, Forgotten are pixies, the same as Fae, except at birth, they cut off their wings and do a ritual in which they absorb the magic through the wings into their, what they call soul. Now, when they do this, it's called the Ashen. Now, when someone has become the Ashen, they basically, it's, it's what it is. It, they turn their wings, their pixie wings, into ash and breathe it. Br let them breathe it in. Now, once they awaken, they, they become the forgotten. And they start growing horns. These horns define and have, are like antennas. They give them the right to use shadow magic and dark magic. So... A lot of them use this magic on an everyday basis, go hunting. They initially, they just use it for survival techniques for the longest time. They had no agenda. They didn't care about the Fae. They don't really care about anybody. However, throughout the generations, hundreds of years, the Fae have kept pushing back the swamps, the outskirts of Everblossom Forest, which is where they reside. It's only now that they start to realize they only have one small part of the forest that was once a 50 split. This did not anger anybody. This didn't show any remorse to anything. There was no feelings. This is just something, the, this is just the way. Morgesh isn't that type of person. She is not the type of person to just let it go. This is our land. This is something that we built. We deserve. So what she is trying to do now is persuade her father we need to attack the Fae with our dark magic. We have so much strength. Decay and destruction will always outweigh peace and creativity. This is shown as in several examples where she goes out to the Everblossom Forest and starts destroying with her dark magic laughing throughout the night, making herself a name, the darkened howl. That is what the Fae called her. Not knowing what it was, they just knew that their precious Everblossom Forest was now being threatened, destroyed, as if someone enjoyed doing this this scared the fae so much one in particular her name is nacy nacy is the name of the fae 
that decided, well, maybe we can talk to them. Maybe we can ask what they want. After all, we've made this beautiful paradise. We can't just simply keep it to ourselves, right? The other fae did not care. This is just a small portion of the forest. In a day, grass will grow back. In a week, trees will start to grow again. Animals will start to thrive in that area. This does not matter to the fae that one being is doing this. They will not do enough damage to permanently scar our forest. Nacy didn't like that way of thinking. Well, maybe if we talk to them, we can help them. We can have peace on top of that without any worry of creating any scars for our beloved Ever Blossom Forest. Nacy decided to go. She fluttered through the forest. I can't wait to talk to them. I can't wait to see what they want. I wonder what they look like. I wonder what they'll think I look like. As she grows near, she starts coughing. <coughs> terrible, terrible smell. I can't believe someone would live in this condition. No wonder they want to go out into our forest. The further out she gets, the nastier and grim it gets. It gets so disgusting she could barely stand it. She starts to notice that her whole body starts turning from bright pink to neon purple. Her body changes and adjusts because it needs to. She starts to look around and feels unease. What do you want? A creepy, crackling sound from the bushes. You disgust me! They, Nacy, the Fae, looked around. I want to know, why are you doing this to our forest? And is there something that I can do to help you so that we can resolve this with peace? More Gesh comes out of the bushes. All but with a dagger and a ragged doll. And a very, very powerful, scary grin. Why, yes, there is something I want. I want to see... What makes your forest so beautiful? What makes it so magical? For you see, our side of the forest is not quite up to your standards. Nacy starts to laugh and enjoys the conversations they have, comparing one, one home to the next. And what they see comfortable and compared to what the other would feel very uncomfortable. Nacy starts to get hungry. Her stomach rumbling. I haven't had anything to eat. I came right over here right when I woke up when I heard the news. Seeing how everything is going well, we've been standing here for a couple hours just talking. Morgesh decides to, well, let me help you. Let me Go out for the hunt. Get us a lunch. Cook it up. And after that, would you be willing to show me where your home is? Faye quickly was so excited for this. However, as quickly as she got excited, she did get just as disappointed. I won't be able to show you directly we they don't all understand and have a one-tracked mind you see the others did not like the fact that i came here but knowing that you are wanting peace i could show you my home in secret morgesh 
starts to smile. The creepiest, slowest smile you would ever see. I would love that so very much. Thank you. Morgesh left to go get and cook. When she came back with fresh, cooked, smoked pork, the Fae saw this and thought nothing but to eat. Crunch, this is not something normally the Fae would eat, you see. The Fae do like to eat for substance. They don't necessarily pick and kill right off the bat, you see. They do cherish life. But they cherish life as if life deserves a meaning or a respect of afterlife. So this was very, very comforting to know that they both shared this same idea. Faye, after they ate, she found a little secret area where she could stow away Morgesh and keep her safe as they sneak around the forest the Fae shows her five of her wonderfully beautiful spots in Everblossom. A waterfall that trickles down into a valley. Beautiful sunset, I mean sunrise, that could follow through the mountains. And the four other spots that resemble just as beauty, just as wonderful. Morgesh looks around. This does seem beautiful. What keeps the magic going? Is it you? Nacy laughs again, chittering, knowing that she has no clue how the forest really works, even extends into the swamps where Morgesh lives. Our forest is magic goes through itself and us, yes, but at its core, it keeps us alive with the ever blossom heart. The heart, where is this? I would very much love to see this beauty, of course. I know just the spot to sell you. Nacy quickly grabs Morgesh, floats her to the very top of a random tree. She follows down the tree of one trunk and it dips down all the way. And she sees a grand opening through bushes right above. She falls down into the hole and sees all around her a giant red, beautiful rose beating just like a heart. This is the heart. And it is my job, mine alone, and my family's, to keep this safe. This is why our peace means so much. If we can complete the forest, but without Nacy's, could barely finish the sentence, Morgesh grabs her dagger and throws it directly at, at Nacy, reacting as quickly as she can with, with, with grace and perseverance. She quickly dodges the knife. However, that was not the intended target. Morgesh grabs the knife that stabbed the rose and takes a giant chunk of a petal. Hearing a crack of the, giant, of the forest hurting in pain, Morgesh eats the heart. The rose becomes black as a whole, and Morgesh's eyes become gray. I can feel the forest. I can feel your decay. And all around the, all around them both, the forest became ash and Morgesh lives.